Hi, it's Jessie. Today I'm drinking this spice blend tea from Healthy Teas. It is just a combination of ginger, cinnamon, turmeric, and cloves. Oh, that's good. It's very simple. It's actually more mild than I was expecting. And I might... And it would probably be good. You know what? It would be. I'll be right back. I'm gonna... I'll be right back. Alright, so I'm just gonna try. I added just like plain black tea. This is pure black tea. Nothing else from Bare Leaves. I don't know if you can read that because it's really crinkly. Um, we'll see. After the steeps for a couple minutes. How that is because I think this is because this is such a simple blend of just spices. I think it'll go really well mixed with the black tea. Well, that steeps. I am here today to do my winter 2021-22 winter highs and lows. If you're new to my channel or if you haven't been following the series, instead of doing a monthly or even bi-monthly wrap up, I instead just sit down at the end of every season and tell you the top five books I read for that season, plus a few any books that I read that I think were bad enough to warrant warning a person about. At this point you should be seeing scrolling, actually I guess on this side, uh, my top, uh, any books I read in winter of 2021 into 2022, so that's December, January, or February, that got at least four stars on my rating system, at least a four out of five. Uh, I will note that there is one book I'm reading that I will probably finish before February's up, uh, but I'm not expecting that to be a top. I'm not even expecting it to be four more stars, so. Anyway, ooh, yeah, that's good. That's really good. Uh, that diversion aside, let's just jump into it with my top five books in no particular order of this winter. So first on this list is going to be Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I picked this up from my library. My library started doing this blind date with a book thing and it's fantastic because almost every time I go to the library to pick up my holes, I pick up a blind date book and read things that I maybe wouldn't. I was kind of hesitant to read Mexican Gothic. I had had it recommended by a friend that said it was one of his favorite books. He really enjoyed it, but it didn't really speak to me. Um, Gothic is a strange genre for me that I'm not sure how I feel about it, uh, but this really, really worked for me. So this is about Noemi, who is a young woman in 1920s Mexico. I assume it, I know, I know, I should, I should assume Mexico, but like, I don't want to assume. Anyway, 1920s Mexico, and her cousin sends a very distressing letter home about how things aren't going well with her new husband in their house. So Noemi goes to check out what's going on there and things get weird. I really love this. In particular, I loved Noemi. Now this was on the lower end of a four star for me to be entirely honest, but I feel like it's going to stick with me in a way that a lot of even my more highly rated books won't. Because Noemi is just, she's an icon, I love her. She puts off this very, what's the word I want? Materialistic isn't quite the word I want. Um, vapid might be a good word for it, facade. But underneath she's really intelligent and clever and she's aware of society's biases and uses that to her advantage and I really really loved reading her um kind of misadventures in this house was it the most surprising book no there were some interesting twists but for the most part you saw what was coming but I don't think it was trying to be shocking and I also think this is really like if you love gothic horror I think you will really really enjoy the way that Mariano Garcia takes inspiration from that and still makes it something of her own. The next book on my list is going to be Bunny by Mona Awad. Uh, Bunny is about, what is her name? Samantha? Jessica? Samantha, I think. Uh, about a young girl named Samantha. She's in a grad, very selective, very small grad program with these three other, four other girls called that call themselves the bunnies or call each other the bunny. And they're very strange, they're very exclusionary, they make her feel offset, upset, and just excluded because they're the only other people in this program. 
And so slowly she kind of gets invited to be in their group. She gets invited to an event, decides to go, finds out these ladies are up to something very strange. I really like this. Now, this is not something to go into if you are expecting complex characters. It's not something to go into if you want an easy reading experience. This is very much, it's, I saw a lot of people reviews calling it pretentious and it is, it, it definitely is pretentious, but it's trying to be and it's intentionally pretentious. And I think there's something to be said for the intentionality of it. Um, I also think that a lot of the character, a lot of it talks about how the characters are very shallow or they're just kind of one dimensional. I would give them a little more than that. Or they, they have this, um, they're very not stereotypic, archetypical characters. And that's also very intentional. It's very much a criticism of writing. And it, it, I found it really interesting just from like looking at it as this like cool, uh, edgy story. Uh, but also if you want to get deeper and analyze the choices that Mona Awad makes in this, I really think you could get deep in this and really enjoy it. Uh, next on my list is Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. This is, oh God, how do I even describe this book? This is a speculative, I'll give it, call it speculative. It's technically sci-fi, but there's some fantasy elements in there. A story that has kind of three stories that are all pulled together and twisted inside each other. So you have three main characters um, whose names I cannot remember at this point. So I'm going to call number one, the donut lady, who is an alien, her and her family have fled this disease that is overcoming the Galactic Federation and they hope to set up a space in, on Earth where people can kind of escape or use as a vacation on their way to someplace else, help other refugees. Then there is the violin lady. Oh wait, no, what is she? Um, Madam Hell, I think, uh, who is a violin star, for lack of a better word, who sold her soul to the devil or to hell for in exchange to make her be remembered forever, to be immortal. And in exchange, she needs to bring them seven souls. Uh, and she has seven years for each soul. And she is coming up on the seventh year for the seventh soul and hasn't produced one yet. And then the last character is Katrina. And Katrina is a young trans woman who wants to play the violin, has recently run, run away from home, and is really just trying to figure her life out. And these three stories weave together and it's just, you have this Faustian tale, plus this very contemporary story, like Katrina's story is very much just this contemporary trying to figure her life out. And this sci-fi thing, and they all come together and it's so unique and it's so interesting and I love all of these characters even if I cannot remember their names. <laughs> Donut Lady is Lon and Miss Hell, Madam Hell is Mistress of Hell? That might have been it. Is Satori, something Satori. Anyway, regardless, um, they are just delightful. This, I want to say before you read it, look up some content warnings because it's really heavy. It it seems like it's a very lighthearted plot and a lot of the the marketing for it kind of makes it seem lighthearted. Like all of the things, like the tagline is good omens meets long way to a small angry planet. It is not that lighthearted. There are lighthearted moments, but it's it's really got some heavy content in it. So I recommend looking up trigger warnings, but I loved it. I thought it was so cute, so fun. I. I thought it was so unique and interesting and that really does something for me more than anything else you can say about a book. It being unique and interesting is really what's gonna sell me on it. Next up on the list is The Ruthless Lady's Guide to Wizardry by C.M. Wagoner. This is about Deli, who is a little bit of a hedge witch. She just kind of lives on the streets, does her magic, uses it to swindle Pete and con people and She's kind of coming up, rent to do. She doesn't have any money and she gets hired or swindles her way into being hired 
as the guard of a lady on the way to her wedding. Um, and shenanigans ensue. Um, this is so fantastic. Like, it is so sweet. It got major, um, it's got major locked tomb vibes. Also fits the, um, Midnight Bargain, kind of that. It definitely more, weirdly more locked tomb than, um, Midnight Bargain, which is not what I expected, but I love. It's like if you took characters out of the locked tomb and put them in a situation written by Jane Austen. That's what it's like. It's it's so good. The characters are great. There's a fantastic found family element, which is to die for. A beautiful female-female romance that's just really sweet and really puts Darcy and Elizabeth to shame. It's cute. It's so cute, and I really had a fun time reading it. And finally, again, no particular order, my last top for the month is, or for the season, is Jade War by Fonda Lee. This is the second book in the um, Greenbone Saga. I read Jade City, which also was fantastic, uh, and then picked up Jade War, and I really loved it. I loved it even more. The ending of this wrecked me to the point where, like, I don't know when I'm gonna be comfortable picking up Jade Legacy because I don't know what she has in store for me and I don't know if I can manage it. But this is about, gosh, how do I explain this in a way that makes it appeal to people like me that didn't want to pick this up? Uh, it's about the Kane, Ken family. Sorry, I could not for the life of me remember Call, the Call family. It's about the Call family who run one of the two major clans in charge of Jan Loon City. And it is the trials and tribulations they face. It is very much about politics and family drama and uh, it's just so many different things. You have a lot of different characters. Uh, Shay, Hilo, Lon, uh, and Andin are the like main ones. Andin is a young man just kind of starting about to graduate from school and join the clan. Uh, Lon is the leader of the clan. Hilo is the, in charge of the military aspect of things. And Shay, who left the clan and left the city behind to kind of explore other avenues. And it's just so brilliant. Um, and this one in particular just wrecked me. Like I said, it's the ending of this. I just, Fonda Lee can't keep getting away with this. That's my review. All right, and with that, we unfortunately have to come to my bottoms for the month. I have three books on this list. One is a DNF and then two that actually got a low, I finished and gave a low rating. So let's start with the DNF because I DNF this kind of early. And so it's very possible that if I had kept reading it, I, I, may, I may have eventually liked it, but I just couldn't make myself keep going. And that's 16 Ways to Defend a Walled City by KJ Parker. This sounds like such a fun concept. It's about the um, engineer of a city that ends up having to take over and protect it when everything starts falling apart, when they are um, sieged and kind of seem like they're on their last hope. He's not a military strategist. He is just an engineer that is going to do the best he can. Here's the thing. I got, I don't know, I forget how far I got into this. I could check my spreadsheet if I wanted to. So I got 82 pages into this. So I was, you know, this far into this book. So I don't know, a quarter of the way through it maybe. And we hadn't, he wasn't even in the city that was being sieged yet. And there was just like such an arrogance to the writing. Now I do think that was meant to be the character. It's not the author being arrogant but I just couldn't stand it. It was so pretentious and I know better than you and I it just, I couldn't stand it. Plus there's this weird like racial allegory that's being set up that I didn't trust from what I had seen at the beginning of this book to be handled well throughout. And so it just, or maybe it's more like a xenophobia than a racial thing. Either way, I just did not trust it to be handled well as it was set up at the beginning 
and it just was so slow moving like it took me it took me two weeks to get that far into this like it took me two weeks to read 80 pages I just it wasn't doing it for me let me know if maybe I should give it another chance let me know if maybe I should just give it up and look up some reviews look up some ratings look up some spoilers because I there were some things in here that I was interested in there's also like one female character and she is like kind of got that stereotypical powerful woman femme fatale I'm smart and I'm in charge vibe that was like not working for me so I don't do well with books without a lot of women in them so moving on from the DNFs to the books that I finished and did not love I have two of these the first is going to be Legend I can't The Legend of the Ten, Ten Elemental Masters by Nick Smith aka you I don't know how to say this guy Ulilia 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 whatever if you know who he is, you know. It, it, actually, chances are if you know who he is, you recognize this book, so I didn't even need to say his name. This my partner got me for Christmas is honestly more or less a joke. I thought of doing like a full review of this and just tearing it apart and talking about how bad it was, and I decided not to because the honest truth is Nick seems like he's trying here, and I actually think there's something so fascinating in this, and I, I found myself more in awe of the chutzpah to publish something um and just like the sticking with it and I just I decided it wasn't worth tearing apart now don't get me wrong this is it's weird there he writes whenever he writes a color he includes the hexadecimal code for it distances are all very precise and specific let me go ahead and just read a small excerpt from here just this is the first paragraph knuckles glides north 1500 feet above lake S sacagawea at 800 miles per hour following highway 83 a small thunderstorm is somewhat visible to the south the sky is 3 8 scattered with cyrus clouds and 1 8 scattered with alto stratus clouds the wind is 15 miles per hour with gusts to 20 miles per hour a few small patches of snow and ditches some in wa with water are visible but hard to see due to the speed a 40 second pause in speech occurs while credits display on the screen <laughs> that's how this is written here's the thing though by about a third of the way in the into the book I was just used to it now that doesn't do anything for me it doesn't I don't I don't know what exactly 18 centimeters looks like or whatever but somebody else might and that might be a good way for them to process information when they read and there were things in this that I really loved the one thing I really want to give it um credit for is this is kind of it's very I don't want to say cinemagraphic. It's very much like a turn-based RPG. Anytime there's combat, it's so described in a way that I, as like turn-based com combat in an RPG, like I can't think of a game right now, like Fire Emblem, I think does it or, um, anyway, if you don't want to, I'm terrible with words, but, um, and it was so vivid and like the way he described the tax, it was like, if you know when you do like a special attack on Pokemon like some of them have animations it was like that and it was fantastic and I really liked that so I found myself after I like stopped thinking of this as like I'm trying to compare this to the average book that I read and just like turning off my I kind of enjoyed it I kind of liked it I mean the story wasn't good don't get me wrong there were literally zero snakes Anytime something went wrong, Knuckles could just snap his fingers and fix it. Or, sorry, do the very elaborate magic casting pose, which uh, there is so helpfully a diagram of on page 11. Um, and it would be fixed. So the, the story wasn't great. There were no stakes. I literally didn't know for half of this book what the point even was. But there were some really interesting things in here, and I do think the style of writing could work for some people. So I know this is in the bottom because it was not good but like it's kind of better I, I i found myself liking it more than i expected to and last on here one i am actually very genuinely upset about is the route of ice and salt by jose luis serrata this is a story so if you're familiar with dracula and dracula 
he has to have all of his dirt shipped from Transylvania to England. And there's a ship that transports it and you find out that it doesn't go well. There's a vampire in their hold. Like you think it's gonna go well? This is a story about that. So it's Captain's Logs about that journey. And I was like, that sounds fascinating. I also heard it was queer. I was like, great, fantastic. Oh, I've never read a book that made me so upset. <laughs> the captain is so predatory and uncomfortable. It's like a stereotype of what a conservative white woman thinks a gay man is. It was so uncomfortable to read. It was very much like he, it just, it, I didn't, I don't even want to talk about the things I hated about it. It just made me uncomfortable and I didn't like it. And then on top of it, there was like weirdly little tension. It took so long to get into the creepy stuff happening. And even when the creepy stuff started happening, it was so focused on the captain's like weird sex dreams that like it wasn't even there. And like the only part that was like the captain's logs in the typical way. So like the first part is like his journal and then it changes was at the very end and the, like the last third is what I wanted the whole thing to be was this like tension of like you know I don't know a random date you know Sunday February 27th at 2 35 one of the men has gone missing like that last third is what I really wanted and even that came back to his sexual fantasies and like I think the attempt here is something that is very common which is the um creating an analogy between queerness and vampirism. And this is a thing that happens. And I think there are ways it can be done well. There's actually an anthology I just heard about from Books and Lala that I wanna read that's all about that. This was not it. <laughs> this was like, this made me like, I don't wanna say, how do I put this? How do I put this? It doesn't make queer men look good. Instead of like making vampires like sympathetic in some way it makes queer men look predatory and bad it just it was bad it was bad and it was offensive and i hated it i, I hated it so much. so these are some of my favorite books from this season these are some of my least oops, least favorite books from this season let me know what you read this winter anything in particular you loved or hated think i should pick up or think i should stay away from if you like this video, please leave a like, follow if you, uh, subscribe, not follow, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Love you. Bye.